So I got early access to Google's VO2, which is coming just a week after Sora's release. And now Google has been hailed the new king of AI video, but did it steal the crown? Frankly, yes. And simultaneously, no. All right, let's go get hands on for a deep dive review. Yeah, we have a sponsor today. More on that in just a little bit. So setting the stage here, Google did drop a pretty big bombshell in the wake of Sora's release with VO2. A lot of the demo footage we saw was super impressive. And listen, I am right along with you in that I was a little skeptical about VO2, you know, considering that we actually never saw a release of VO1. Donald Glover got to play with it. We did not get to play with it. But that does not seem to be the case with VO2. I mean, I got access to it and Donald Glover is way closer to an EGOT than I am. We'll talk about release in just a little bit. There is a wait list linked down below. I, I happen to get lucky and the Google DeepMind team was kind enough to grant me access, particularly after so many of you went and vouched for me. So I'd like just to thank everybody for that. So all that out of the way, let's go check out VO. So first off, the UI is very reminiscent of Imagen, uh, Google's AI image generator, which just updated to a version three. We're gonna take a look a little bit at that in just a minute. We have options for text to video and text to image to video, which I'll explain in just a little bit. But really, that's kind of about it. We'll start off with our man in a blue business suit. Last we saw him, he was uh, hopping on an airplane. We didn't know where he was going, so let's go check in on him. Well, that's not good. It appears as if our man in blue business suit's plane has gone down and he is now trapped on some mysterious tropical island that is definitely not the island from Lost. Overall, yeah, I mean, this was one of my first generations and I found this absolutely stunning. Lots of details in here that I did not prompt for, uh, including the fact that our blue business suit is ripped up. Um, our guy's got a little bit of a blood stain on his blue shirt there. Really nice camera movement with the tracking in. Uh, the location looks actually pretty realistic. Maybe minus the fact that the airplane itself does look like it was not a recent crash that looks like it has been here a while. Now, was that a cherry picked example? Yes, of course it was. But here's what's kind of cool is that for every prompt you run, you actually end up with four generations. I actually lost the original one that we were just looking at. Again, this is early access and currently at least nothing is saving to any library. So if I forget to download something or rerun it, it's gone forever. Just to showcase what we got on a rerun here, here is our first example. Pretty solid output as well. Just to me, not quite as compelling as you know the one that I showcased at the top. Another example, uh, you know, a decent shot, but not a lot is happening here. Our third one has some very nice emoting from our man in a blue business suit. Um, yeah, nothing necessarily wrong with this output. And our fourth output showcases a very shell-shocked man in a blue business suit. Not gonna lie, uh, that's probably a lot what I would look like. So starting off my test with just those keywords, I chose photorealistic, surreal, high contrast, and dramatic, which are basically keywords for this channel. The results were very promising. Uh, VU outputs eight second clips at 720. Uh, yeah, all of these look really great. Uh, Planet Eyeball, of course, being the most terrifying. So with that in mind, I started off with some minimalist prompts, uh, for example, scenes from an 80s horror movie, and ended up with a result like this, where our killer is clearly walking across a lawn, and then we get a fade out, and then he's just like, eh, I don't feel like it tonight. Solid output here of this guy wearing like sort of blue scrubs, walking through a creepy abandoned hospital, and probably the most 80s of them all with this woman running down a hallway. Uh, at least it says 80s to me, given that hairstyle. Obviously, things can be a bit of a mixed bag. For example, moving more over into a sci-fi setting, like we have this shot, which I think looks pretty great. I mean, granted, our guy is sweating profusely, but he's also navigating an asteroid field. I'd be sweating too. Uh, but as you note there at the very end, it kind of uh, you know quickly cuts over to a second shot that isn't quite as compelling. But again, I'll say that even in these early explorations, there, I could see a lot of potential here. Uh, for example, running. I mean, that's really good. We haven't seen physics this good in an AI video model, well, basically until now. Is it always perfect? I mean, of course not. For example, here we have our guy uh, kind of midway through, he kind of takes a little bit of a skip, um, or you know, maybe he's just really into skipping in the middle of a combat situation. Character details here are really pretty stunning. I will admit that like this shot in particular has kind of a bit of a green screen volume kind of vibe going on. Uh, but you know, then again, so does everything on Disney+. Plus. Now, obviously here, we probably all want to step up our game in terms of prompts. Uh, for example, in order to generate this Fallout-inspired uh, shot, which still kind of blows me away, it definitely hits that sweet spot of tell me it's Fallout without telling me it's Fallout. 
So in order to figure out a prompt formula, I did, of course, lean on an LLM. Speaking of which, so we don't talk about ChatGPT much on the channel, but that does not mean I don't use it every day. And recently, OpenAI's 12 days of OpenAI event really pushed things to a breakneck pace. We've seen a lot of new things dropping daily from advanced reasoning models to vision to search. And while all of it is really cool, it can also get a bit overwhelming. Like, where do you even start if you want to use AI to get more done? And that is where HubSpot's free ChatGPT resources come in. Whether you're looking to save time, improve your output, or just get more organized, it's designed to help you put AI into your daily life. And here is what's in it. A super handy flowchart to help you figure out when ChatGPT makes sense for your tasks, a customizable template to keep everything aligned with your brand's voice, and an AI content refinement checklist to make sure the work ChatGPT produces is ready for the world. My favorite part is the 100 plus ChatGPT prompt section. It's filled with practical prompts that might not occur to you to ask for ChatGPT's assistance on. It's perfect if you're looking for quick wins to implement AI right now. I recommend you check out the link in the description to download it. The whole resource was put together by HubSpot, who I'd like to thank for sponsoring today's video. So what I did to sort of figure out what the prompt formula here is, is that initially, uh, if you hit I'm feeling lucky, it'll sort of randomize a prompt for you. And generally, these prompts look pretty good. Um, so just going ahead and copying this, and then keeping it in the family and taking it over to Gemini Advanced 2.0, I asked it to analyze and break down that prompt for me in terms of what elements were in there. Uh, funny enough, actually, Gemini was like, uh, uh, hypothetically, VO2 doesn't exist yet. As a note, I did also take it over to ChatGPT 01 Pro, uh, pretty much, you know, exact same results in all honesty. From there, I could give either of them directions on what I was looking for. And yeah, the results ended up taking a big jump up. For example, our wasteland survivor in a burnt out diner giving hard looks is like dog meat rolls up and is like, what, what's going on here? What's our camera crew here? I probably said it a hundred times on this channel and I will continue to say it. I don't care if that dog is AI generated. It is a good boy. Another cinematic example of Titanic without saying it's Titanic. Uh, you know, not Jack there is definitely looking at the water going like, that looks really cold. A couple more interesting findings before we move into image to video, which I know is the thing that a lot of you are probably very interested in. Uh, for one, one thing that I've noticed in these like four generations is that when you do run calling out for a specific character, in a lot of the generations, you're going to end up kind of getting a very similar, if not the same character. Uh, this was an example that's a little bit on the looser side, but at least in these two videos, it pretty much is the same character. You could probably get away with her as well. But again, I cannot state how good the physics are in this model. Uh, here we have like sort of four parkour shots. Now, granted, we do end up with some weird movements here and there, like here he kind of takes a hop and then at the end he's like going to take an Olympic dive. Or you'll note as he's kind of running up the stairs here, uh, he'll kind of like teleport through this bar and like a whole new section uh, of the building appears. But I do think that there's enough material generated just in these four clips that, you know, if you were doing some quick cutting and some high energy music, uh, I mean, you could totally get away with this. Nicely composed shot of one of our noir detectives standing in a back alley looking at a clue. Really nice kind of Victorian era shot here, although it does look like the guy uh, has a smartwatch and he's kind of like texting on it. So there is that. The background does look a little bit static as well. So that one would probably be worth a reroll. And finally, fight scenes and physics. Um, yeah, this stuff looks really good. By far, this is the best that we have seen in terms of uh, being able to pull off you know, an accurate fight scene. Are there still problems? Of course there are. For example, in this shot, our uh, guy there begins as one character. As he passes around, he becomes a different character. Or maybe he's a shapeshifter, and that means Cargo Pants guy is in a lot of trouble. I mean, it will still occasionally go into kind of like weird morphy stuff. Um, the camera movement here is really good and we do get some cuts in there as well. So again, I think that this is another situation where uh, it's just, if you're aiming to do something like this, it's just gonna be a lot of like re-rolling and re-prompting. But I gotta say some of the kind of like slower motion fight sequence stuff, like kind of like Tai Chi-ish, um, like this stuff looks really, really solid. Now, moving over to image to video, which is actually not image to video, it's text to image to video, which I know it might sound a little bit on the confusing side, so it is image to video. The catch is, is that the images are generated in Google's ImageN3. 
But I got to say, I'm actually okay with that because Image Gen 3 has taken a really big step up. For example, one of the image prompts that I've been playing around a lot with, kind of a riff on the uh, Soar's Man in the Parisian Cafe mixed with an astronaut, is an astronaut in a pristine white spacesuit sitting at a rustic Parisian cafe holding a delicate cup of coffee as other patrons act completely normal. Um, yeah, this looks pretty good. And I got to admit, Imogen actually ended up really cracking me up when I swapped out the prompt for the patrons acting strange around him. I mean, that's that's funny. So we end up with a shot like this, which is okay. I mean, I could probably re-roll this and re-prompt a little bit to get something better, but I kind of want to one-shot this because there's a bit of a learning curve here. Um, so once we have our shot, our next step is to move into the motion where you might think to put directional type stuff like the astronaut puts the coffee down on the table and stands up and then, you know, adding in, let's just try doing this in fast and see what happens. Well, I gotta say this ended up surprising me because my intention here was to show how it kind of goes off in its own direction. Uh, and as it turns out this time around, uh, we actually got what I asked for. So I'm glad we got to share this moment together. That's really impressive. What I was going to say is that we normally end up with generations more like this. This is our cyberpunk woman with white hair uh, in a snowy cyberpunk alley uh, where, you know, she walks and then uh, it eventually ends up just cutting to an entirely different scene or character. The trick I found earlier was to re-prompt your image prompt in your motion prompt and then maybe add one of the presets in as well. And then you tend to get, um, you know, what you're looking for. Although, again, the astronaut in the Parisian cafe has been now rethinking the whole thing. That said, letting it roll on its own can sometimes have some pretty hilarious results. Uh, this was our man in the blue business suit trapped on the island again. Uh, and, uh, you know, not giving it any direction, VU gave us this, which is, I think, pretty hilarious. Like, oh, I crash landed on this maroon island, but hey, there's like a bar here. That's not too bad. Now, I'm still very early into VU2. I've only had it for like 24 hours now. So there's definitely a lot of stuff that I still want to dig and mine through it. And clearly they'll be adding new features in. Like we don't have the ability to extend video yet. I'm, su I'm sure that we'll get it. And although I normally don't do like prompt battle head to head things, uh, I mean, obviously you guys will want to see how it stacks up to uh, Sora and you know, I did pay 200 bucks for Sora. So again, while I don't necessarily believe in prompt battles, mostly because, you know, each model handles prompts differently, um, you know, we can see a comparison of a few shots here. So I'm not judging Sora too harshly here, although I, it still baffles me as to why, you know, they haven't incorporated ChatGPT or some sort of LLM into the prompt structure. You are open AI after all. Meanwhile, on the Google side, and by no means is this a criticism, I mean, they're like 72 hours post-release here, but there are some features that I would love to see implemented by the time it does go public. At minimum, the ability to extend would be great, and if possible, maybe some variations on some of Sora's marquee features like recutting and the ability to blend. But I will definitely say that as it stands right now, uh, this is the best text to video model I have used yet. Quirky? Yes, it absolutely can be. Does it hold your hand? No, it absolutely does not. But again, what we're looking at is very early in and I'm like literally generating as I'm sure that they are working and changing things in the background. But overall, hats off to the Google DeepMind team. This is definitely a big jump up in terms of AI video. As for you expediting and getting in on the wait list, uh, my biggest recommendation would probably be to join the Discord that is linked down below. My standard Discord, or really just life advice, applies here. Uh, you know, don't hop in and immediately start asking and demanding for access. Instead, just hang out, be a part of the community. And, you know, when the next wave of people come in on early access, I mean, you will be top of mind. In the meantime, I will continue exploring VU and letting you guys know what I find so that when it does release, you can hit the ground running. As always, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.